and the New York Yankees, who are battling to overtake the Cleveland Indians for the league leadership. The Yankees, in losing yesterday, gained nothing but lost nothing as the Indians were defeated by the Chicago White Sox. Well, the Indians maintain their lead. Of course, the Los Angeles Angels picked up a bit of ground. They're just percentage points back of the Yankees, and they're both just a half game out of first place. So this is an important doubleheader for both ball clubs. And the respective managers, Bill Rigney and Ralph House, have just come to home plate with their lineup and the pregame discussion. Ralph Terry will pitch the first game for the Yankees, and Bob Allen, Don Allen, will pitch for the Los Angeles Angels. For Don Lee, I beg your pardon. Martin Lee's son. Don Allen, I believe, runs a Chevrolet dealer in the uh, New York area. Well, there's a free plug for Don that was not meant necessarily. Elsewhere in baseball today, Kansas City plays up at Boston. Detroit is at Baltimore. The Tigers and Orioles split a doubleheader last night. Minnesota plays at Washington, and the Senators have been very difficult for Sam Neely's club. They won last night one to nothing. And Cleveland plays Chicago, and the Indians are certainly having their troubles as they drop the first two games to the White Sox. Yesterday, early win won his 296th Major League victory, shutting out the Cleveland Indians. Not bad for a man 42 years old. Makes us old-timers feel a little bit younger when we can see early win go out and still fetch a shutout. In the National League, the New York Mets, who were no-hitted last night by Sandy Koufax, meet the Angels in a single game. Philadelphia at San Francisco, Pittsburgh at St. Louis, Cincinnati at Houston, and Chicago at Milwaukee rounds out the full day of baseball in the major leagues today. Crowd today that probably will get up into the middle 30s, possibly with some latecomers, might get up close to 40. The Yankees take the field with Boyer going to third, Crush to short, Richardson to second, Joe Pepitone at first base, Hector Lopez in left field, in center, Roger Maris, and in right, Johnny Blanchard. Behind the plate, Yogi Berra, and doing the pitching, Ralph Terry. Now our national anthem. Pitcher's mound. Take his preliminary tosses. It would seem this might be a good day for the left-handed hitters with a mild gale blowing out towards right field. Why in the 1961 World Championship pennant are really flying at right angles. Rizzuto and Red Barber will be taking over shortly. Red to handle the play-by-play. We'll hear, of course, from Red and Mel Allen as well today. Albie Pearson, the pint-sized outfielder with the Angels, watching very carefully as Ralph Perry takes his warm-up pitches before... Pitch number one of this long doubleheader that stands in front of us. Bo Belinsky was scheduled to work today, but uh, injured himself last night when he pulled a muscle 
in his hotel room. So Bill Rigney will have to make a little change in his pitching plans today. And for looking forward to seeing the colorful Belinsky work today, uh, we'll have to wait for another angel visit. All right, we're set for action now. As Yogi Berra makes his toss down to second base, let's move over now and pick up the old redhead, Red Barber. Terry, who has won nine, lost seven, makes his first pitch of call strike. Cloquer, which he got over above the knees. And the ball game is on its way. That's the first pitch of it. Al Salerno is the ball and strike on far behind the plate. Stevens is at first, Kyle like at second, and Stewart is at third. Booker swung on and popped up. A shortstop first, back settling uh, one, two steps on the left field grass for the catch in the out. One up, one away. Now we have Billy Moran. He and Leon Wagner were selected by their fellow players in the league, starting positions on the American League All-Star squad. From the Yankees, uh, Maris and Mantle was selected. Billy Moran, right-hand hitter. Swings and lines the ball safely in the center field. They hit. He didn't waste any time on that. Hit the first pitch. Ryan Single. He is having a tremendous season. Moran went up there hitting at 297, so this puts him right back at uh, 300. Pearson's up at 284. Now we have Leon Wagner hitting at 295. Jesse folks all heard the Sandy Koufax pitched a uh, no-hit ball game last night out of Los Angeles against the Mets. Pearson takes an outside curve. Uh, Wagner takes an outside curve. And his ball one. Left hand hitter. Outfield plays in the pool. Terry delivers and swinging hits the foul ball back out of play. Blackie Bridges is the third base coach for the Angels. The surprising ball for him. They got themselves right under the thick of it. Then a virtual tie with the Yankees each is a half a game back of the first place Indians. That's being right up there. Go to first, nothing doing. Up on return. Change of pace is one on a foul back. One and two. The fellow leads the league in home runs at 21. Having a big season, is batted in 58. Double headed today, Kansas City Indians at the stadium tomorrow night, Tuesday afternoon, and the double header on Wednesday the fourth. Number the Wednesday double header starts at 1:30. As I foul back on a flatter in on his hand, one and two. It seemed that um, Wagner was first going to take the pitch and then realized it was too close to take. And he sort of flicked at it at the last foot second. Grant Terry going for his tenth win. The Yankees have won uh, four of the six games between these two clubs this year. Wagner swings, hits the ball straight out to Maris, where he's played in right center. Uh, it's a catch for out number two. And the batter is uh, Bob Rogers, fine young catcher, hitting 277. He is a switch hitter, and he comes up to hit uh, left-handed against right-handed Terry. Uh, we asked him uh, down in the dugout uh, which way was he born, and he said uh, he was born to hit right-handed, or he learned to hit left-handed. In fact, uh, that's almost an extraneous question. 
Pitch is high outside. Ball one. Uh, ball for Steele, they've got it made if they uh, naturally bat left-handed. So you don't have left-handed uh, uh, fellows uh, anxious to be switch hitters. It's the fellow who is hitting uh, right-handed that will sometimes turn around if he has the ability to do it. All right, no four. Two down, runner at first base. Sunny breeze swept afternoon. Fastball is inside and low. Ball two. Al Salerno, new umpire in the league. Back of the plate. All right, two and all. Pitch. Swung on as a line drive hit takes in the center field. Base hit. The runner from first, Moran, holds up at second base. He was not starting with a pitch. So we have manifest in second. Rogers lines a single in the center. Hit number two. Now we have Lee Thomas in the stocking of this club. Um, two winners back. He came off the Yankee letter. Selected by the Angels. Thomas hitting 271. Him to pull into right. Stroking the bat slightly. Third is wide. Ball one. This breeze is holding up. It may be even picking up a little bit. We'll get the official word on it in a few minutes. blue and white. Thomas swings as a ground ball hit the second baseman Richardson who is up with it over to Puppetone at first. He almost threw the ball away. Puppetone had to stretch toward the round to bring it in which he did. Uh, no runs and two hits. With uh, Richardson almost throwing that ball away I would say that maybe he might have been pivoting on that uh, strained ankle of his. And might have done it because he has a very accurate arm. Now score at the end of half an inning uh, Los Angeles, nothing in the Yankees coming to bat. This is Frank Lovejoy. Flying is one of my hobbies, and in between pictures and stage engagements, I managed to get in quite a lot of flying time. And, of course, as a flyer, I've come to know and respect engines. That's why I was so impressed when I saw one of the Atlantic Imperial test cars. It had two transparent carburetors and two separate fuel systems. I could look right into the throttle plate area and see what was going on. One of the carburetors was operated on a variety of gasolines, and I was amazed to see how dirty it was around the throttle blade. But not the carburetor that used Atlantic Imperial. The throttle plate area on that carburetor was still clear and clean, and to me, it was pretty dramatic proof that Atlantic Imperial cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. One of these test cars may be where you can see it soon, and I hope you will. But in the meantime, make the seven-week switch to Atlantic Imperial. I know you'll like the performance you get from your car with Atlantic Imperial. John Lee on the mound has won overall with uh, Minnesota and his new ball club, six and lost four. However, with the Angels, he is three and one, and he has not allowed an earned run in the last 16 innings. He'll be pitching first off to Stress, Richardson, and Marriott. Uh, they feel that uh, they should not try and play Mantle in both games of a doubleheader. Uh, if you're wondering about uh, the fact he's not in the batting order for this first game, because they got him at a pinch hit if they need him. And Stress hits the first pitch a high pop fly that the shortstop is under. There's Toppy making the catch. And very quickly, one up and one away. Stress went up there at 260. Now we have Richardson coming up at 294, and he's hit safely in his last 11 ball games. Bob has been uh, just, just climbing right on up and up. He's on uh, quite a surge. First pitch, low inside, ball one. Bobby 
penalty bunt, and the ball hits him in foul ground. So it's a strike. He's running for a base hit. And he ran into the ball before he got out of batter's box, which is regarded as foul ground. Bobby, in the last 21 games, has uh, hit a 360 clip. When he started this, he was hitting at 265. That's what we mean. We say he's climbing right on up. 294. We have no score. One out left in the first inning. Lee, very tall right-handed, delivers and rips and hits the fly ball straight out into left field. And there is the catch of it for out number two by Earl Averill, Jr. For the Angels, we have Lee pitching, Roger catching. Uh, Thomas is the first base. This is uh, Maris. He's looking... Uh, as the entrance as he steps up. Second base is Billy Moran and the shortstop is Joe Pappy and all three of those infielders are between first and second on this drastic overshift of Maris. The third baseman is uh, Felix Torres. Aside from Abel in left field, we have Albert Pearson in center and uh, Leon Wagner in right. Maris uh, takes the third ball low inside, ball one. The wind is now blowing at a steady 15 miles an hour. More than a breeze. A change of pace curve, come on and miss, in under the hand. One and one. Lee wasting little time, delivers, and Maris hits a high fly ball out to deep right field. Wagner is back. Almost against the stand, makes the cut, and the tide goes down in order. One, two, three. Totals at the end of the first inning out here in the first game. For the Angels, no runs, two hits and no errors, and for the Yankees, no runs, no hits, and no errors. Well, Sunday's always a big day in baseball. Let's see what we've got. Uh, single game, Kansas City at Boston, and Wilson will be the starting pitcher for Boston. This is his first time out since he pitched his no hitter, uh, which was against uh, the Angels. And against uh, Valencia. Uh, Detroit failed to score. Uh, first that bat, a single game at Baltimore. Bunning against Robert. Uh, Minnesota is at Washington, and uh, the Twins are starting Pasquale. Uh, Cleveland playing a doubleheader at Chicago. In the uh, National League, uh, New York is playing a single at Los Angeles. Philadelphia is playing a single at San Francisco. In fact, they're all singles in the National League. Uh, Pittsburgh at St. Louis, Cincinnati at Houston, and Chicago at Milwaukee. Second inning, it will be April, and then Torres, followed by Coffee. Ralph Terry, tall, slender right hander. Here's Undershirt. I happen to be in the clubhouse uh, checking uh, something with manager House uh, earlier in the day. And uh, he was sitting in front of his locker waiting. Uh, his undershirt is just uh, uh, full of holes. It's a piece of a rag. And I said to him, I said, well, I don't have to ask you. This must be your lucky shirt. <laughs> well, you know, you get an idea that something is good luck. And so uh, apparently he's going to wear that one. Boy, that just simply blows away. That's it, Sabro. In there for the strike. Uh, we were talking with Billy Rigney in the Los Angeles dugout, and we said, to him, is there any reason why you wear a wristwatch? That's, you know, you don't uh, see a wristwatch down on the playing field as well as the uniform. Not this stage of the game. That's a full care for strike two. He said, no, there's no particular reason except, uh, I don't know, somehow or other I started to wear it the first of the year and things started going well. He said, now I'm scared to take it off. <laughs> And no balls to strike. A slow crash going on in left. He took him out using uh, slow breaking stuff primarily. Now we have Felix Torres. Abel um, 
hitting 244. Torres hitting 259. We have no score out here in the first game. We got a lot of people here today to see this interesting doubleheader. There's a curveball in there for a strike. And there are good seats available for all of the games in this upcoming series with Kansas City. It's tomorrow night, Tuesday afternoon, doubleheader Wednesday. Booker swung on, fouled off. And Ralph is continuing to use slow breaking stuff to get this inning. Nothing in two. He's got a smart old head back of the plate calling me, such as Mr. Barra. well around toward left. There's the fastball. Call strike three. He sure had him set up for it. Well, we've been commenting upon all this slow breaking stuff and suddenly there he ripped the fast one right in. And Torres wasn't set for it. So he struck out the first two hitters. And now we have shots up Joe Coffey. He's hitting 236. There's been a lot of stories told about uh, uh, Barra, humorous stories, and uh, I think in the telling of those stories, uh, while it has heightened to the likability of, uh, of Yogi, as a slow curve, swinging strike one, I think uh, almost uh, unconsciously it is motivated away from the basic fact that Yogi has one of the smartest baseball brains around. He is a real smart ball player. Third ball, though, outside. Ball one. One and one. One ball, one strike. Terry picks up two quick strikeouts. Ralph uh, goes overhead, kick delivers, and that looks like a change off the fastball, just high outside ball two. Turn one. Joe's got a half turned around and visit on that one. Two one pitch, curve off, swung on and miss. Strike two. Now let's see. What will he throw him? Two and two. Fastball is low outside. He just missed with it. He tried to hit the outside corner to knee. Mark three two. Terry has an alive fastball. Like he has all the pitches that a pitcher can need. Three and two. Half is set. A slow curve is swung on and popped up. It's a high ball almost to first base. Preparatory now in foul ground by Steph makes the catch for the third up. So we have nothing of course and the score at the end of an inning and a half of this first game. Los Angeles nothing and New York nothing. Here's one good way to solve problems. Prevent them before they start. And you can prevent some pretty pesky problems in your car's engine when you make the seven-week switch to Atlantic Imperial. You see, while you're out driving, dirt can get into your carburetor and build up around the throttle plate. When this dirt builds up, well, your problems can pile up. Your car may stall, idle roughly, waste gasoline. But Atlantic Imperial washes the dirt away from the throttle plate, actually cleans your carburetor as you drive. So why not prevent that dirt buildup and the engine problems that go with it. Switch to Atlantic Imperial for seven weeks. See for yourself how great your car can really run. Start now and make the seven-week switch to Atlantic Imperial. The gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean.
Jackie Barrett will lead it off. Last of the second inning, and this no score first gets up two. After uh, Yogi, then uh, Blanchard, followed by Puppetone. Oh, man's up there hitting 206. They play him to pull. I feel well around in the right. Don Lee delivers in there for a call strike. Big tall right-hander, and he has exceedingly long fingers. He can lose that baseball when he wraps his hand around it. There's a curve swung on, hit deep out the right field, uh, close to the sand. Wagner's right there at the wall, and makes the catch. A half step in from the wall. So a high fly ball to deep right field, and we have um, one up. Now we have John Blanchard. John hitting at 247. And they are uh, swinging around on him as though he were married. Back in that infield and uh, outfield, they got five of them out there. And in addition, the uh, infielders are deep. There is a fastball for a tall strike on the outside above the knee. Lee, with his long fingers, throws a fork ball. It's one of his uh, pitches. Low outside, threw it hard again. Ball one. And the deal, the serve swung on out his foul between the first base coach Wally Moses and the bag. Frank Cosetti is over at his uh, station at third base. And one and two. Blanchard steps out, that's for uh, the batter's out and bag. Two strikes. The fifth swung on. That looked like the uh, fourth ball. There's a ground ball, a second throw over the first, and Blanchard is easily out, four to three. And we have Joe Peppertone hitting a 270. And the outfield is somewhat in the right on him. Infield is a separate throw around toward uh, first. But they're back now with two infielders on each side. Although the shortstop now comes over the way he's almost directly in back out second base. Cuffetone hits the ground ball foul outside first. Cuffetone has very quick wrist. Uh, if you watch him, you don't seem to see him take any back swing. Now, suddenly he swung before you realize he was ready to swing. John Lee, pitching. Bob Rogers, catching. There's a fastball swung on late and fouled off. Strike two. That was quite a trade that Los Angeles made uh, to get Lee. Gave up a pitcher named Donahue that's always been sent down to the minor leagues by... Uh, Minnesota. The two strike pitch, a curve, swung on foul back. That was into the hand. Came to Los Angeles May 30. In the month of June, won three and lost one for them. Uh, 16 and two-thirds, uh, 17 and two-thirds innings without an earned run. Which is outside ball one. One and two. Draw right-handed delivers and it's a foul tip. This fellow's uh, uh, dad was a fine major league pitcher, a big left-hander named Thornton Lee, you may recall. 
Six for the White Sox. One and two. Bending to his pass. Tuppetone swings. It's a fly ball into short right field. The second baseman is going out. Billy Moran and makes the catch. So this is now 18 innings uh, without an earned run by Lee. And totals at the end of two in this first game are 0 2 for the Angels and 0 for New York. And... Remember, automobile manufacturers recommend changing your oil every 30 days in winter, every 60 days in summer. So see your Atlantic dealer now. But pause for station identification. This is the home of Champions Network. It's Good Sound Broadcasting. That's the Malcolm Jones Show on WOKO in Albany, Monday through Friday from 4 to 5. On this, the Pacemaker Station. End of an inning, Minnesota at Washington. And nothing yet on the beginning of the doubleheader, Cleveland at Chicago. None of the games in the National League, uh, their off singles, have begun. Mr. Hank Bauer and his boys will be in here tomorrow night. Tuesday afternoon. Doubleheader on Wednesday. Remember the doubleheader Wednesday is 1.30. And now we have Lee, the pitcher coming up to hit for himself. He has uh, six hits for 33 at bat. out on the mound. A full curve, low outside, ball one. The way Bella is getting him so far, Terry is using more slow breaking stuff than I have seen him use at this stage of the ball game. Work. He threw the fastball by him and swinging. One and one. Ball in the strike. Still a little blood left. A slow curve is fouled back. Strike two. One and two. Now the batter is in. Touch of pumping. Sit. Swung on. Foul back. One and two. Terry delivers. Pass ball low inside. Ball two. Two and two. We have wind cards to uh, for the players to contend with this afternoon. The height of the stadium, triple deck. When you got a strong wind blowing in, there's a fly ball that is hit in the short left field. Hector Lopez moving in under it. Takes it. The wind uh, is gripping the uh, pennant on the top of the uh, stand. The wind blowing from left field to right field, from third base to first. But then it catches as it blows in and ricochets back in just the opposite direction down on the uh, field level. See a piece of paper every so often just going opposite to the way the, uh, you see the flag is blowing. And uh, these are factors that uh, the players have to contend with all the time. Right now, this uh, wind blowing back is picking up loose dust, and they're holding up uh, the game for a moment. Boom, that's more than 50 miles an hour to do that. Wow, blew it right up here. Dust and all. 
There's Will Pearson up there, bunting and foul across the third base line. Bunting for a base hit. Now they're hitting 283. The mighty mites, of course, they are bound to call him. Come on and miss. Low inside hook. Nothing in two. No balls to strike. One out. Inning three and no score. Terry Deal. Terry swung on, grounded down to first baseman Pepitone, who tosses to Terry, who's there in time for the out. First place into the pitcher covering, and they have two down. <laughs> Billy Moran got the first hit of the ball game. Line single to set on the first inning, hitting 299. Brings it a change of pace, and there's a big one bounce to Boyer at third. There's a throw over to first base to Puppetone, and the side is the side in order again. Four. At the end of the two and a half innings of the first game, Los Angeles nothing, and New York nothing. Boy, that burns me up. What does? That dirty windshield. You'd think they'd have cleaned it at that station back there. Next time, stop at an Atlantic station with a red ball sign. Buy as much gasoline as you want. If the Atlantic dealer doesn't clean your windshield and check your oil, you get your money back. Your gasoline free. No kidding. No kidding. If the weather permits, it's guaranteed. The Atlantic dealer actually guarantees to check my oil and clean my windshield? Yep, or your gasoline's free, your money's refunded. Don't forget that. What kind of ball was that? Red, my friend. The Atlantic Red Ball sign. This offer may vary in states such as Massachusetts and New Jersey. Hey, you know, Red, I was uh, sitting over there reminiscing, and I know now how old I'm getting. There are three kids in this game whose fathers I played against when I was with the Yankees. Tom Tresh, whose dad caught for the White Sox. Earl Averill whose dad played for the Cleveland Indians, and Don Lee, whose father pitched for the White Sox. So what does that make me? Uh, Phil Rizzuto. An old one of <laughs> Well, I tell you, Phil, you may not have thought about it, but it happens to everybody. And if you don't like it, consider the alternative. Here we go into the last half of the third inning. We have uh, Hector Lopez, uh, Cletus Boyer, Ralph Terry. It's called on Lee on the mound for Los Angeles. Delivers and it's a call strike. He's tied on uh, Lopez. Hector hitting 257. No score ball game. Ball is inside. One and one. Lee serves on the outside low. Ball one. He's six four, two hundred and ten pounds. Big boy from Arizona. College pitcher, university. There's a foul ball back. Uh, Lee has beaten the Yankees once this year, and that was when he was with Minnesota. All right, two and two. Pitch 
pitches just outside, ball three. Lee is not only tall, 6'4", but he's long-legged tall. Fastball inside. First man, he's allowed to get on. Seven, he's fifth two. Now we have uh, Judith Boyer hitting 284. Uh, Boyer has uh, been going to right field for a lot of his hits lately. The Angel infield is in double play depth. They're not looking for the box. Now the third baseman comes up off the bag. He's not charging the plate. There is a swing and a high pop fly, and the shortstop Joe Copy. Shielding his eyes with his glove hand, makes the catch, and we have one down. So the bunt was not on. Now we have Terry, who is, uh, has six hits for 51 at bat. Figure. Now, they can't be uh, certain they don't bite him. Sometimes in a spot like this with a pitcher up and one out, they do bite him. Hopefully the leadoff man can pick up the run. At least the Angels have to be positioned accordingly. And he sets the bunt and bunts at it. Misses for a strike. You might ask, uh, well, why would you, uh, would you bunt with a pitcher with one out? Well, the idea is, uh, one, you figure uh, the percentage is that he's not going to get a base hit, and therefore you want to get some, some mileage out of him. Also, uh, there is the uh, possibility that if he doesn't hit, he might hit into a double play. He, he bunts at a, at, a, at a pitch that was inside. He drew his bat back, and the ball uh, ticks the bat. Terry tried to claim he ticked his uniform. Head on Pastorano says, no, pick your bat, strike two. All right, nothing in two. Please sit, Terry was set to bat and then took a low outside curve for a ball. Playing for that bunt, even with two strikes on him. One and two. Set. Now it was set to swing and then took another curve low outside, and it is two and two. The end of uh, two innings. Uh, it is Detroit 2, Baltimore nothing. Uh, the wind that we were talking about seems to have uh, subsided somewhat. Not a steady breeze. There goes Lopez, Terry swinging, hits the ground ball through, back up into a base hit in the right field. Still on a hit and run play, he comes up with a single to the right. Delivered perfectly. Getting off that around the third day. Well, well. I guess Hauk uh, switched to that when he figured when the count got to two and two that Lee was probably uh, uh, going to come right in there. Not get behind. So it's a hit and run single. In the right field. First Yankee hit. With one down, one of the first and third, and now we have the lead off uh, uh, Tom Kress, the switch hitting shortstop, batting left handed. Hitting 259. Swinging and lining the ball foul in the right field foul. Press up there hitting left handed. No score, and the Yankees are now stepping. That was a big play by Terry. And that was a hit and run. They had Lopez started. And uh, when
when he started, the second baseman broke to cover the bag, and that opened up the right side of the infield, and Terry hit it right through. Back one pitch, swung on, line foul, down the left field corner again. Strike two. And with one down, runners at first and third, and now I have the lead off uh, uh, Tom Trash, the quick hitting shortstop, batting left handed. Hitting 259. Swinging and running the ball. Left-handed. No score, and the Yankees are now stopping. That was a big play by Terry. And that was a hit and run. They had Lopez started. And uh, when he started, the second baseman broke to cover the bag, and that opened up the right side of the infield, and Terry hit it right through. Back one pitch, swung on, line foul, down the left field corner again. Strike two. Lee, now that he has his men on, is being uh, somewhat deliberate. Are you ready? Press the door first. 
There he goes. Bobby swinging, hits a line drive off the second base of the glove. And Trent is on his way into third base, and Bobby's on his first. And let's see how that scores. Moran, again on a hit and run fly, uh, was going towards second base. And Bobby almost hit the ball behind him, but the second base was stuck out his glove and just barely kicked it. Oh, he couldn't check his momentum. So two hit and run plays, it worked. And for Richardson, this is a single, and his cross play game is hit safe the end, and about an hour is Mallet. Earn runs off uh, Lee in 18 and um, two thirds inning. There's Maris, bunt, and fouls it back. That was uh, Scott to be a surprise. He's trying to bunt toward uh, the open left side, and it only has the third baseman over there. The overture. On the right side, two on the left. Reset, pitches, and Maris swings and misses at what I believe to be the fourth ball from high outside. Ball had an erratic wiggle to it, and I know the pitcher has that delivery. Had nothing in two. Leading one nothing. Strike three swinging. He threw a fast platter on the outside and struck him out. And it is one run. The uh, first in 19 innings off Lee uh, earned run. One run on two hits. There were two men left. Totals at the end of three of the first game are 1 2 0 for New York, 0 2 0 for Los Angeles. Well, Phil, what about playing hit and run with a pitcher and having it come off that way? How about that when things are going your way, Red? That's what happened. And the Yankees twice played hit and run that inning, and uh, it helped them get both hits both times. Richardson, too. Swung at the ball that Tress was going to second, and it got him a base hit as Moran was going over to cover second base. Well, that's the fun of baseball. And the fun of smoking is in the flavor. And for the biggest flavor there is in filter smoking, try Winston. Winston tastes good like a cigarette shirt. See on the scoreboard, the Red Sox lead Kansas City 3 nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Detroit leads Baltimore 2 nothing at the end of two and a half. Minnesota and Washington, nothing, nothing at the end of two. Cleveland and Chicago just getting underway. Francona has home and with one arm, the Indians are leading. And the National League, only one game underway. Chicago at Milwaukee, there's no score at the end of one. The Yankees leading here, one or nothing as we get ready to go on the top of the fourth inning. For the Angels, it'll be Leon Wagner, Bob Rogers, and Lee Thomas facing Ralph Perry. Wagner lined out to center field in the first inning. batting 294. Ralph Terry ready. His first pitch is a curve hit foul outside of first strike one. And the Yankee dug out and Bill Scowen made a nice one-hand grab of that foul ball. Moose is resting this first game. As is Mickey Mantle. hit on the ground at second base. Richardson on the short hop has it. Throws to first in time to get Wagner. Bobby started to back up on that ball. It took a big hop. Then he had to come charging in and get it on the half hop. But he made the play. And it's one out. Brings up Bob Rogers who lined the single to center in the first inning.
Nice cool breeze blowing today. Not helping any fly balls hit to the outfield, that's for sure. But it makes the fans nice and comfortable. Rogers, a left-hand hitter. Wings and misses a fastball, strike one. On deck, Lee Thomas. Low curve, high and outside. One of one. Now it's a sell up for a little uh, change of pace. Been following the Mets all year. I'm doing a real good job. I'm up watching the Yankees today. Curve is inside. Two balls and one strike. Just held himself to one of Joe Cooper's Winston's. Just make sure you leave enough for me. The 2 1 pitch. Line foul down in the seats down the right field line. Rogers golfed that one, a low fastball, took right off his shoe top. And it looks like the bat might be cracked. And the bat boy, very observing, sees a crack in the handle of the bat. And is going to go back for a new piece of lumber. Rogers remains at the plate talking with Yogi. Two catches, talking things over. Two balls, two strikes, and one out. Nobody on. Yankees leading one nothing in the top of the fourth. Terry Reddy. Short windup. Change up line to right field and again curving back into the seat. Two line shots by Bob Rogers, both going foul. Way down here the foul ball. Boy, the flags are blowing straight out. Quite a bit of debris blowing around the infield. Batters take time every once in a while. Let the papers blow away. 2-2 curve. Popped in the air. Back of second. Richardson is backing up. Flips the glasses down and takes it in short right field for the second out. That'll bring up Lee Thomas, who bounced to the second baseman. and nobody on. Broken back ground ball to first. Pepitone up with it. Flips to Terry covering in time for the out. Boy, Thomas broke that bat right at the handle. So the Angels get down in order in the top of the fourth inning and at the end of three and a half it's the Yankees won, the Angels nothing. This is Frank Lovejoy. Like a lot of people in show business, I find it relaxing to spend some time with things that have nothing to do with my work. Cars, for instance. I have a car that's a collector's item. It's a beauty, and it still runs with the best of them. That's because I've taken care of it. Now, whether yours is a show car or one you depend on to get you where you're going, I know you want it to perform well. And there's something you can do that can help a lot in the way your car performs. Make the seven-week switch to Atlantic Imperial gasoline. You see, dirt deposits can build up in the important throttle plate area of your carburetor, and they can cause trouble. But when you drive with Atlantic Imperial, it actually cleans away those deposits. See for yourself. Make the seven-week switch to Atlantic Imperial. I know you'll like the difference this quality gasoline makes in your car. That's Atlantic Imperial. The gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Yogi flied out to right field in the second inning. He sent Wagner back to the barrier in right field. Each team with two base hits. The Yankees capitalizing on their two. For the lone run of this ball game in the third inning. The 
Well, you know, the angel infield does not overshift on Yogi. He's quite a pull header, but they know Yogi can go to left when he wants to. Strike one to Yogi, and Yogi looks back with those sad eyes to play on fire Al Salerno. Didn't argue with him, just a little pleading. Maybe get one on the next set. The curve is popped in the air. It's short right field this time. Wagner is coming in, waving everybody away, and they collide. Wagner, somebody's got it. But Wagner was hit quite hard. Wagner was yelling and waving all the way, and Moran came from nowhere and knocked Wagner back, and Wagner did a complete somersault over. How Moran ever held on to that ball, I'll never know. They never saw each other. Actually, I never saw Moran because Wagner was coming in, had it all the way in easy catch. Moran had to be going full speed back. The trainer, George... Freddie Federico, the Los Angeles trainer is out there administering a little first aid to Leon Wagner, who is laying flat on the ground. I think he had the wind knocked out of him. Nothing more serious than that. And that'd be a tough blow for the Angels for the rest of this series. And, of course, for as long as he would be out, if he is going to be out any length of time, he has 21 home runs. Wagner is moving his leg. And boy, that is a rough play because when two fielders are going after a ball and neither one seeing each other and suddenly to collide and not expect it, you cannot prepare yourself for the blow. A lot of times you can hear one outfielder running in as the infield is going out. But the roar of the crowd and the intensity of each player going after the ball kept them from hearing each other. And Wagner gets up now, and I think he's going to be all right. As I said, I think he had the wind knocked out of him. Rubbing his stomach, he's taking his glove. And Bill Rigney pats him on the back, as does the trainer, Freddie Federico, and Wagner's going to remain in the game. And as we told you, Billy Moran held on to that ball. Let's see, Wagner is 6'1", 194 pounds. And Moran is 5'11", and 180 pounds. Well, it's fairly close. Johnny Blanchett coming up. Johnny bounced out to second base in the second inning. And now the Angel infield over ship. Torres remains alone between third and second. Man, that Pearson's way over in right center. And Earl Ever way over in left center. What room down that left field line? Don Lee into the windup. His pitch to Blanchard is over the outside corner strike call. Curve full foul outside of first. And the ball boy booted that one, and he's mad because he had two perfect days in a row. And he threw one. Let's see, who was that? Bill Stafford sitting in the corner of the Yankee dugout tried to get it on one hop. It hit off his hand and went back into the crowd. So the fans get an unexpected souvenir. Next pitch to Blanchard is outside. One ball, two strikes. One out, nobody on. The Yankees lead one nothing in the bottom of the fourth. Lee into the windup. The pitch is outside. Ball two, two and two. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to charge Bill Stafford with an error on the uh, ball boy throw into the dugout. Frank Cressetti will get all over Stafford for losing a the baseball. There's a curve full foul down the right field line back into the seat. I said that some of those fans jump at those line drives, never come close to it with their hands, but they sure come close to it with their face and their heads. They leap up in the air and throw their hands up in the air. It's tough to judge that kind of a ball. It's amazing more on hit. Again, the 2-2 pitch. 
foul back in the upper deck out of play. How about that Sandy Koufax pitching that no-hitter against the Mets last night? Striking out 13. I saw to watch the beginning of that game, but first inning took so long. And it was getting so late, and we have a doubleheader today, I had to give it up. The pitch, change up, pop foul coming back right near the boot. And it hit short of the television camera. Still two and two on Blanchard. On deck, Joe Pepitone. Fastball foul back in the upper deck. Oh, and a fan in the first row had it in his hands, dropped it, and went back on the screen. So that evens up for the ball that Stafford deflected into the stand. One out, nobody on. Outside with a change up, and it's a full count, three and two. Blanchard batting 246, swings and fouls the pitch off the umpire's mask, and it almost knocks big Al Salerno down. Boy, I'm telling you, that foul ball hit Salerno solid. And he staggered back a couple of steps. Adjusting his mask now. It's a 3-2 count on Blanchard. And that gave me a headache just watching him get hit with that ball. I don't know. I'm really in bad shape. Again, the 3-2 pitch. He checks swing foul back in the mezzanine and out of play. Blanchard making leave pitch. paper blowing directly in front of Blanchard. Well, it doesn't bother Johnny. It bothers some hitters. They call time. The pitch. He popped it up. Back of the plate. Bob Rogers throws the mask away under it and takes it for the second out. Two out and it'll bring up Joe Pepitone. Nobody on. Pepitone popped up to second base in the second inning. Joe batting 269. Joe is a curve over the outside corner, strike one call. Foul over towards the Yankee dugout, right in the dugout, and Stafford boots another one. Only this one he got after it kicked off his hand. Nothing in two. Little Stafford hears about me telling about his errors in the uh, dugout. Nothing in two on Pepitone. The pitch is line to right field. Wagner going to his right and one hands it. Oh, man, did he nonchalant that one. That ball was hit like a bullet. And Wagner was going back near the Yankee bullpen, just reached up and gloves it one-handed. The Yankees get down in order in the bottom of the fourth, and at the end of four, it's the Angels nothing and the Yankees one. Gave that score backwards, didn't it? It should be the Yankees one and the Angels nothing. 
But anyway, right now I'd like to mention that the second half of this game is being brought to you by today's Valentine beer. The one beer, Golden Mellow from the Golden Harvest. So settle back and enjoy baseball and Valentine beer while we pause for station identification. He's here every Monday through Saturday morning from 6 to 10 to tell you why and when. That's Jeff Davis and Jeff Davis time on WOKO in Albany, New York. On the scoreboard, the Red Sox meet Kansas City. Three to nothing at the end of two. Fister against Wilson. Malzone home it with two on. Detroit leads Baltimore three nothing at the end of three and a half. Bunning against Roberts. Colavito home in the second is 17th of the year. Minnesota leads Washington 2 0 at the end of three. Pasquale against Ripplemeyer. Lenny Green home it with one on in the third. Cleveland leads Chicago 2 0 at the end of an inning and a half. Ramos against Buzz Hart. Francona home it in the first with one on. In the National League, the Mets are at Los Angeles. Philadelphia at San Francisco. They start later on as the Cincinnati at Houston. Pittsburgh at St. Louis. McBean against Jackson. Chicago at Milwaukee. Nothing, nothing at the end of two. Codwell against Henley. It's going to be another one of those days I can see where I can't get the words out of my mouth. I said that my buddy Dr. Lewis gave me some pills for this infected arm of mine. They must be happy pills. But they kill the pain, but I feel like I'm floating. And I'm numb all over. Especially in the head. And what I want to say won't come out when I want to say it. So it should be a very interesting day. As long as we get the score right, though. Can't get in too much trouble. Here's Earl April. April struck out in the second inning, batting 243. Swings at a curve, foul hits at strike one. Deck Felix Torrey. Yankees won, Angels nothing, top of the fifth. Fastball hit on the ground is short. Stretch on the big hop. Rose to Pepitone and plenty of time to get April. And it's one out. And I just broke the point of my pencil, Bill. I don't know how I did it. How do you like that? See, as I said, I'm numb. I don't no feeling. And Felix Torres was called out on strike in the second inning. On deck, Joe Copy. Curve the Torres over strike one call. Angels won their first game of the year here yesterday. And the first game they've ever won at Yankee Stadium against the Yankees. Side on Kirk swung at a missed strike, too. That was a beautiful pitch by Terry. Good motion, and it was a real bad pitch, but the motion pulled Torres. That's what he swung at. Good crowd here today. The two strike pitch, the fastball is high and tight. One ball and two strikes. One out and nobody on. Second base, Richardson on the big hop. Flip to Pepitone, and it's two away. Two up, two down. Here's Copy. Copy pops up to first base in the second inning. Shortstop. Two out and nobody on. Yankees one, Angels nothing. Top of the fifth. Side on curve, hit on the ground, in the hole. Stretch back. No, he can't get it. He had his glove on the ball backhanded, but I believe that'll be a base hit anyway. I don't think he could have thrown copy out. It goes as an infield single. They've got by Boyer. 
I don't know how it ever got by Boyer. But it did, and Trish had a glove on it, and it scooted underneath, rolled away about 10 feet. Ralph well, Terry had retired 12 men in a row since Rogers singled in the first inning, up to that single by Copy. And it brings up Don Lee. Lee fly to left field in the third inning. at the right-handed. Pitch to Lee. A line drive to left field. A base hit. Oh, this could be trouble. Coming around second. Going to third. And they're going to wave him in. They're going to wave him in. The throw to the plate. And he's out. He'll be made a beautiful play. As he took that ball up on one hop and Poppy is hurt. Oh, Yogi made a sensational play. As Rocky Bridges waves Poppy in, on the double by Don Lee, the throw came in from Lopez to Richardson. Richardson fired the ball to Yogi, but it was on one short hop. Yogi was blocking home plate, and as Yogi caught the ball on one knee, how he ever held on to it, tagged Copy, and never lost the ball, I'll never know, but it was a great play by Yogi. Saving a run, that play goes from seven to four to two. Copy is still on the ground, and again, Freddie Federico is out administering a little first aid. He hit Yogi hard, but you've got to remember that Yogi has set himself, and he has all that catching gear on for the Angels in the top of the fifth inning. No runs on two hits. No Yankee errors. One man left, and at the end of four and a half, it's the Yankees one and the Angels nothing. How golden mellow good a beer can be. Taste today's Valentine beer. Golden mellow good from the Golden Harvest. Valentine's Golden Harvest is barley, specially grown, and hops mellow two weeks longer than any others. Next time, better make it Valentine. Valentine beer, America's finest since 1840. So have a golden, golden Valentine from Valentine, golden harvest time, refreshing and mellow every time. Golden mellow, Valentine, Valentine beer. Copy is being put on a stretcher and will be carried out. He is conscious and is moving around, but rather than take any chances, Bill Rigney's going to take him out of the ball game, and there he leaves, and he gets a fine hand. Steve Bilko carried the stretcher out by himself, and he takes one in now from Bob Rogers, who has got to go up there and warm up the pitcher. He was never not unconscious. And we're going to have a new shortstop. And I wonder if this is that new kid that they just brought up. Jim Fergozzi has had reams and reams of stories written about him. Jim Fergozzi was recalled from Dallas, Fort Worth in the Texas League on Friday, June the 29th. That's... Dallas Fort Worth. He had played in 50 ball games, was at that 219 times, had 62 hits, nine doubles, three triples, one homer, 14 runs batted in, was batting 283. But he is supposed to be quite a fielder. He was born on April the 4th, 1942, in San Francisco, California. 6'2 and 194 pounds. Well, he sure doesn't look that. So Fergozzi goes in 
That's spelled F R E G O S I. Hector Lopez will lead off. Hector walked and scored the game's only run in the third inning. And that was the only walk that Lee has issued in this ball game. That usually happens to pitchers with real good control. When they do walk a man, it costs them. Lopez batting 257. As soon as we get further word on Joe Copy, we'll certainly pass it along to you. Lee's pitch to Lopez at ground ball. One hopper to Felix Torres at third. Throw to Lee Thomas and Lopez is out of there. One pitch, one out, and it brings up Cleve Boyle who pops to the shortstop in the third inning. And for those, he was quite an athlete while he was in high school. He won 11 letters. Three in baseball, three in track, three in football, and two in basketball. One out, nobody on. Yankees one, Angels nothing in the bottom of the fifth. Boyer takes the pitch outside, ball one. Cleet batting 283. The fastball is high, ball two. Two or nothing. Fastball swung it and missed strike one. Two and one on Cleet. Pitch is swung in a miss, strike two, two and two. Hi, right, Lee into the windup. His two two pitch, a ground ball to third. Corey backs up and hits him. The short stops up with it, but slips on the turf. That took a bad hop and hit Corey's on the shoulder. And that should go as a base hit. It was, whoops. They are charging Torres with an error. And I know it's going to get me in trouble again, but i got to have a talk with that official score. That was really a wicked hop. It never touched his glove. As a matter of fact, it almost hit him in the face, off his shoulder. The shortstop went over and backed it up, caught it and slipped on the ground. And we'll put that in lightly. Error to the third baseman because he might change his mind over there. It brings up Ralph Terry, who after failing the bunt on two pitches, single to right field, sending Lopez to third. And I think they changed that to a base hit. That a boy, there's a throw to first, and boy is back. They have changed it to a base hit, and rightly so. By the stretch, the pitch, Terry bunts and fouls it off. Looks like Ralph's going to pull the same play he did last time. So that's three hits now of Donnelly. And I won't get in trouble after all. One strike on Terry. Lee Thomas holding first against Boyer. Here's a stretch. Terry swings and hits one to left center field. Pearson digging to his right is under it now, and he has it. And it's a good thing Averill didn't bump into him. They were both going for that ball. And Pearson was shading Terry way over in right center. He had a long run for that ball, and it was hitting almost straight away center. But it's two out, and here's Tom Tresh. Tresh pops it short, and 
bounced into a fourth play, but by beating out the return throw to first, he was credited with an RBI. I'm batting 258. Boyer at first with two outs. The pitch is bunted foul outside of third. Strike one. Gets the new ball, rubbing it up. Yankees one, Angels nothing in the bottom of the fifth. Boyle leads away. The pitch out, but Boyle was not going. The Yankees have been playing a running ball game today, and they've made it pay off. for the 1-1 one, one pick. Bluff going and the curve is outside. Boy, boy, I gave a good take that time. As though we were really going to go. It took about three steps and Bob Rogers jumped out of his catching position but Cleet hustled back to first. 2-1. He said when runners do that it throws off the pitcher, the catcher and the shortstop and second baseman and makes them move. Makes the pitcher get rid of the ball maybe a little quicker, and he loses his control. And sometimes the catcher can drop the ball, and Boyer bouncing off first. He bluffed going again, and the pitch, whoops, Al Salerno started to put his right hand up and ended up scratching his ear. Very clever the way Al did that. It almost fooled him. He almost put the right hand up for a strike and quickly reached the lobe of his ear. Quit thinking. So it's three and one. The stretch by Lee. This time Boyer goes, the ball is fouled in the Yankee dugout. Stafford didn't have a chance to boot that one. It wasn't near him. Well, I'm going to really make him mad at me when he hears the report. That little Pete, don't you tell him. That little Pete listens in, you know, down the Yankees clubhouse. Big Pete does too, but I know Big Pete wouldn't squeal on me. Full count on track. Now Boyle will be going with two out. There he goes. The ball is fouled back in the upper deck. A 3-2 count on stretch. On deck, Bobby Richardson. Here's the stretch. The pitch is fouled back out of play in the upper deck. Having his cuts up there, and Lee is pumping that ball around the plate. Yankees scored in the third inning, and that's the only score of the ball game. They lead one nothing. Again, the three-two delivery. Goes Boyer, the pitch is line foul outside of first this time. Boy, oh boy, dropped that one again, but he recovered quickly. I don't think he can give him an error on that one. It's still three and two. Position. His pitch is hit deep to right. 
This one is gone, I believe. Wagner back. He can't get it. A home run. It's his fifth home run of the year. The first one off the Angels. And the Yankees lead three to nothing. So Tom Tress has driven in all three runs for the Yankees in this ball game, giving him a total of 39 on the year. And that ties him with Roger Maris for the team lead and runs batted in. Bobby Richardson takes the pitch low ball one. How about that Tom Trex? 39 RBI. Tom Trex hits his fifth home run of the year. The first one off the Angels. And the Yankees lead 3 to nothing. So Tom Trex has driven in all three runs for the Yankees in this ball game, giving him a total of 39 on the year. And that ties him with Roger Maris for the team lead and runs batted in. Bobby Richardson takes the pitch low, ball one. How about that Tom Trex? 39 RBI. Bobby swings and lines with a left center field, but Averill going over under it and takes it. The ball hit right on the nose. The Yankees come up with two runs on two bases. No angel errors and nobody left. And at the end of five, it's the Yankees three and the Angels nothing. On the scoreboard, it's the Red Sox three and Kansas City one at the end of three and a half. Now in the bottom of the fourth, Pally Aroni is homeless, so the Red Sox are leading 4-1. Detroit three and Baltimore two at the end of four and a half. Colavito has a homer. Minnesota four and Washington then at the end of three and a half. Green and Allen each have home and for the Twins with a man on. Cleveland leads Chicago three nothing at the end of three. Francona home and with one on. The National League, the Mets at Los Angeles. Philadelphia at San Francisco. Cincinnati at Houston start later on. Pittsburgh failed to score on the top of the first. The Cardinals are batting. And Milwaukee leads the Cubs one nothing at the end of three. Kansas City A's and our old buddy Skipper Hank Bauer come in for three days a night game tomorrow night a day game Tuesday and a double header on Wednesday the 4th of July and the Yankees will take to the road for three days and three day break for the all-star game which will be played on July 10th down in Washington the top of the Angel batting order. We'll face Ralph Terry here in the top of the six. Albie Pearson, Billy Moran, and Leon Wagner. Pearson pops it short and bounces to first. The Yankees are leading three to nothing. We got another big ball game to go. Pearson batting 282. First pitch to Alby, right in there, strike four. Pearson bats him left handed, stands close to the plate. Serve is low, ball one. One and one. Full foul to the right of the Yankee dugout. One ball, two strikes. Best 
four. Popped in the air to short left field. Press back. Lopez in. Lopez still coming in. He's under it now and has it. Harrison flies to short left field. One away. Here's Billy Moran. Single to center. Bounce to third. Moran batting 298. is a fastball strike one. We got the word on Joe Coffey. He suffered a groin injury and he will miss a day or two. Right now it is not considered to be serious. But they're going to keep him under observation for a day or two. And we're happy to hear that Joe isn't too seriously injured. There's a curve low, one on one. So we've had two collisions today. Moran and Wagner collided in right field. And Leon Wagner had the wind knocked out of him. And then Coppy and Barra collided at the plate. Coppy really got clean. There's a foul back in the upper deck out of play. One ball, two strikes, one out, nobody on. Yankees three, Angels nothing. In the top of the sixth. Sidearm curve that Moran just got a piece of. Curve hit off the end of the bat over towards the Yankee dugout. Top short of the dugout. Still one and two. Yogi had the ball boy retrieve that foul boy and ball and keep it in place. <laughs> boy, foul boy. No such thing. Foul ball. How now, brown cow? Fastball line to left center field in there for a base hit. And Maris makes a nice play as he cuts the ball off and keeps it to a long single. If that ball had gotten by Maris, that would have been an easy triple and a possibly inside the park home run. A single to deep left center. Hit number four off Terry. Here's Leon Wagner. Find a center and bounce to second base. One out. Wagner at first. Back to deep right field. Plants it back near the wall, and it's a home run for Wagner. Leon Wagner hits his 22nd home run of the year. in homers. A long, high home run. And it's now a 3-2 to two ball game in favor of the Yankees. For Ralph Terry, that's his 21st home run he's given up this year. You know, I know I made a mistake. I said Wagner's at first and here's the pitch and Wagner hits the homer. Now, that's a pretty good feat. But Moran was on first, and Wagner hit the homer. Bob Rogers takes the curve over strike one call. Rogers singled and popped the second. Wagner was up there batting 293. He now has 60 runs batted in. Rogers batting 278. Curve full foul over the Yankee dugout. So it's a three to two ball game. Now 
Carlos Wagner's first home run off Yankee pitching this year. Best ball is high. One ball and two strikes. Boy, he hit that one high. Powering fly ball. On deck is Lee Thomas. One out, nobody on. Will hit deep to right field, and this one Johnny Blanchett has right against the wall. Oh man, he was right against the barrier. He couldn't go back another inch, and it looked like they had back-to-back -back homers and had the ball game tied up. But Blanchett was back as far as he could go and made the catch. Two out. Here's Lee Thomas. Thomas bounced to second and bounced to first, batting 269. You know, the wind didn't seem to affect Wagner, but it did Rogers, and it actually looked like Rogers hit the ball better. First pitch to Thomas is high, ball one. On deck, Earl April. Two out, nobody on. Yankees three, Angels two. Top of the six. Curve full foul. Out of play. One and one. is over the outside corner. Strike two call. One ball and two strikes. Here's Terry's pitch. A fastball fouled out of the stadium, over the roof, and out of play. remains one ball two strikes two out nobody on Ralph ready now that's both strike three it was a bad pitch Thomas went after struck out for the Angels in the top of the six two runs on two hits no Yankee errors. Nobody left at the end of five and a half. It's the Yankees three and the Angels two. Now's the time for a frosty Valentine. Golden mellow good from the Golden Harvest. Golden Harvest grain, golden good and prime. Hop mellowed longer on the vine. Golden Harvest for Valentine's beer. Valentine's Golden Harvest is barley, specially grown. And hop mellowed two weeks longer than any other. Next time, better make it Valentine. Valentine beer, America's finest since 1840. So have a golden, golden Valentine. From Valentine, golden harvest time. Refreshing and mellow every time. Golden, mellow. Valentine, Valentine beer. Pause for station identification. It's the Bob Cathcart Show, 11 to 1 on the Pacemaker Station, Monday through Friday on WOKO in Albany, New York. Roger Maris batting 241, steps into the batter's box. Roger, fly to right and struck out. Don Lee's first pitch is hit deep to right field. And it curves far way back in the upper deck. And Maris got a hold of that one. Not fouled by too much way back in the upper deck. 
And Bill Rigney giving the sign to uh, his fielders to move around a little bit. They can't move much, but oh, they're going to see. Says a pitch on the outside corner, strike two. On deck, Yogi Berra. strike pitch, hit in the air to center field, Albie Pearson moving under it and the little center fielder takes it for the first out run away and here's Yogi Berra, Yogi fly to right and pops to second Yogi batting 204 First pitch to Yogi. A ground ball in the hole. Moran was left. Can't get it. A base hit for Yogi. And Moran tumbled over as he lunged for that ball. Wagner up with it. Base hit for Yogi. And that's hit number five for the Yankees. Brings up Johnny Blanchard. Bounce to second and fouled out to the catcher. Three, the Angels two. Tom Tress has driven in all three one runs. Oh boy, three runs, one on a ground ball and two on a home run. One out. Yogi leading away. The pitch to Blanchard, the ground ball. The first time it backs up, goes to no. Oh, he started to throw to second and couldn't get it out of his glove. He steps on first, getting Blanchard for the unassisted put out. But Yogi goes to second. Thomas had Yogi easily at second, but couldn't get the ball out of his glove. Here's Joe Puppetone, who popped the second and lined the right field. In yesterday's ball game against the Angels, the Angels won. It was the first win for the Angels in all the games they played here at Yankee Stadium last year and this year. Two out, Barrett at second. Pitch to Pepitone inside, ball one. On deck, Hector Lopez. There are two outs. Pitch to Pepitone, swing and a miss at a low curveball, one and one. That was down below Joe's knees. One and one to count. Yogi leads the way. Pitch is inside. Two balls and one strike. Lee has been crowding Pepitone with his fastball and curve. And Pepitone wants plate umpire Al Salerno to take a look at the ball. And Al's going to throw it out of play. up a little bit. Lee rubs up the new ball. Now the right hand is set. His curve is fouled back off the screen. Two and two. Two strikes and two out. Yankees three, Angels two in the bottom of the sixth. Pitch is a curve and he checks the swing in time as it stayed outside. Three and two. the 
payoff pitch. Here it is, and it's a ground ball at second. Moran off his knees, copy the shortstop off of the close to first, not in time. It's not copy, it's Fragosi. Man, that hit Moran solidly on the knees. Kick about 20 feet over the shortstop, and Moran is charged with the error. And that's only his fourth error of the season. Boy, that hit him hard. He's got his glove over his left knee right now. And that hurts because it hit solid. It kicked maybe better than 20 feet right to the shortstop, who threw the lead Thomas, but not in time, and that's an error. Now the Yankees have runners at first and third with two out, and here's Hector Lopez. Lopez walked and scored in the third inning, bounced to third in the fifth. So the Angels have given the Yankees two breaks in this inning. Let's see if they can capitalize on it. Lopez takes the pitch inside, ball one. had have been able to throw Yogi out at second on the fourth play and that ball would have bounced right to the shortstop who would have stepped on second forcing Johnny Blanchard but it didn't happen there's a fly to deep right Wagner going back near the bullpen he leaps and what a play I think he got it holy cow what a play Wagner made he oh wait a minute it's a home run it's a home run Wagner could wait a minute no he's out what is it And what did he give him? It's a home run. Holy cow, what a play Wagner almost made. He leaped high in the air. He had the ball in his glove, but he landed in the seats on a fly. Landed right on somebody's lap. And now Bill Whitney is out there talking with Mr. Shalak. Wagner's got a big grin on his face, but there's nothing you can do about it because once you're in the stands, that's fan territory, and if they knock the ball out of his glove, it's a home run, and it's a three-run homer for Lopez, and the Yankees did take advantage of the two breaks, the big error by Billy Moran, a three-run homer. Yankees now lead six to two. Man, I tell you, that Wagner made a gallant try for that ball. He leaped high in the air over the railing, which is about three and a half, four feet high. And the momentum of his leap and the ball hitting his glove carried him back into the seat, but he came out without the baseball. So now it's two out. The Yankees leading 6-2, to two, and the batter is Fleet Boyer. Popped to short and singled and scored in the fifth inning. Fresh is driven in three runs, and Lopez is driven in three. Pitch to Boyer, low outside, ball one. was hit with a lot of power to the opposite field by Lopez. Swing and a miss. Strike one, one and one. Slow curve outside. Two balls and one strike. Pitches low outside, ball three, three and one. Boyer batting 285. There's a foul back in the upper deck out of play. Full count, three and two. Payoff 
pitch to Cleet. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Struck him out. But the Yankees come up with three runs, all of them unearned because of the error. One angel error. Wait a minute. That's three runs on two hits. One error and nobody left. And at the end of six full innings, it's the Yankees six and the Angels two. On the scoreboard, it's the Red Sox five, the A's one at the end of four and a half. Fisher against Wilson. Malzone home in the first with two on. Pagliaroni in the fourth with nobody on. Detroit three and Baltimore two at the end of five and a half. Bunning against Roberts. Calavito home in the second with nobody on at 17. Minnesota six. Washington nothing at the end of four and a half. Pasquale from Minnesota. Ripple Myers started. Daniels in the fourth. Lenny Green and Bernie Allen each home with a man on. Cleveland three. White Sox nothing at the end of four. Ramos for Cleveland. Buzz Hodge started. Stone in the fifth. Fran Comer home in the first with one on. The Mets are at Los Angeles in the National League. Philadelphia at San Francisco. Cincinnati at Houston have not started. Pittsburgh two. The Cardinals nothing at the end of an inning and a half. McBean against Jackson. Burgess home in the second with one on. Milwaukee won. The Cubs nothing at the end of four. Cardwell against Henley. We've got another big ball game to go here at Yankee Stadium between the Angels and the Yankees. And uh, tomorrow night, the Kansas City A's will be coming in. They'll be here Tuesday afternoon and a big doubleheader on Wednesday the 4th of July. Well, Jack Reed has gone in to play right field for the Yankees in place of Johnny Blanchard. Ralph Ferry tying his shoelace. And ready to move in here now and carry you along the rest of the way will be Mel Allen. Hello there, everybody. As we get ready for the seventh inning, New York rating 62. Errol Averill comes up for the Angels. Felix Torres on deck and Joe Coffey to follow. struck out, grounded to short, looks to the curveball in there, strike one. Jack Reed in right field in place of Blanchard. Ralph Terry into the windup. The pitch is a fastball a little high, and the count's one and one. One ball, one strike. And the 1-1 pitch, the right-hand batter swung on and fouled back to the screen. Strike two. Ralph Perry getting a sign from Yogi. Taking his time. Now he's set. Into the windup. In comes the pitch. A curve. It's lashed in the center for a base hit. Knocked down by Maris. And Averill is on with a single of center to open the seventh inning. Up comes Felix Torrey. Took a third strike and grounded to second. The seventh hit off Terry. The Angels have out hit New York. Seven to six. New York leading 6-2 as Buddy Blattner broadcast to the Angels just remarked. He used to be a uh, major league player himself, as you know. You don't give the uh, team four outs in an inning. The pitch is swung on as a high pop and a short right. Reed coming in and makes the catch. get away with it a lot of times. He said you don't give the Yankees four outs in an inning. I said you don't give anybody four outs in an inning. Now, here is Joe Coppy. Foul to first and single to short. Uh, Rather, uh, uh, Fregosi, who replaced Joe Coppy. Right-hand batter. Coffee being hurt uh, back in the fifth inning. 
The delivery is low outside for a ball. I'm glad to learn that he uh, did not suffer a serious injury and is placed at the plate. Jim Fergosi swings and lifts a fly ball to right. Jack Reed backs up and makes the catch. The wind uh, blowing quite strongly out in that direction helps them out and they get up real high. And now we'll have a pinch hitter for Don Lee. Outfielder, a left hand batter. Two outs, one on. The pitch is swung on and missed. Strike one. Burgess has had 16 to 74, batting 216. Used largest pinch hitter. Now the pitch. Swung on and missed on a let-up curve. Strike two. Nothing in two. Yankees six. Angels two in the seventh inning. First game of a doubleheader. Ralph Perry's next pitch. Fastball just inside. And the count is one and two. Curve is it off the hand of the pitcher, Terry up with it, throws to Tepatone in time. Here's a slow bouncer, Terry on his follow through, leaning toward the first base line to reach back and knock the ball down. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. Ten to six and a half innings, the Yankees six, the Angels two. Valentine beer time, wherever you are. Enjoy the golden mellow good taste that comes from Valentine's own golden harvest. Every mellow sip brewed from choice grains of barley freshly grown for Valentine. And hops that mellow two weeks longer on the vine than the hops that go in any other beer. Only today's Valentine beer gets this golden harvest. A golden harvest that makes Valentine the only beer that tastes so golden, mellow, good. Valentine gives you a taste you'll always be glad to come back to. Crisp, clean, naturally more refreshing. Valentine, America's finest since 1840. On our home of Champions Network, we pause for station identification. Closing quotations, final stock prices, weekdays at 5.55 on today in Wall Street over WOKO in Albany, New York. The time, 5.44. Bob Bot, B-O-T-Z, coming in to relieve Don Lee, making his 13th appearance. Lee, in his six innings, allowed six hits, walked one, and struck out two, gave up three earned runs. Bob Bott. Last year with Louisville. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, lives in West Dallas now. He's 5'11", weighs 170. 27 years old. Ralph Terry will be the first man that he'll face. 
Yankees six, Angels two, last to seven. Bought the right-hander into the windup, and the pitch is swung on, grounded to third, and takes a bad hop again off Torrey. And Terry is safe at first. The second bad hop off uh, the shoulder this time of Torrey. Moyer hit a bad hop single in the fifth inning. And uh, it was a rough break for the Angels because uh, there was an out before it and out after it, which meant normally the side had been retired. Trash hit a homer. And conceivably, the last five runs uh, scored by the Yankees might not have been scored. There's a bunt by Trash. Of course, that's all part of the game. Some days it goes your way, some days it doesn't. A bad hop single and uh, an error. All followed uh, by homers. Pitches outside for a ball. for a total of five runs. Tom Trash to Homer. Swings and misses. Strike two. Ralph Perry is single in the third inning to set up the Yankees' first run, moving Lopez to third to run uh, coming home on uh, an infield out. The delivery swung on, hit foul, just barely foul outside the bag at first. A one-two count on Tom Trey. Hitting 260. Trey hit his homer off Don Lee, and at one time, both of their fathers were together as a battery. The pitch outside her ball, 2-2. Two, two. Don Lee's father, Thornton Lee, a pitcher, and Tom Daddy, Mike Trash, the catcher. 2-2 two, two pitch, swung on, bounce to first to Thomas, steps on first for one, throws down to Fregosi, tags out, Terry for a double play. Trash bounces down to Lee Thomas, steps on first, throws to Fregosi to double up Ralph Terry. Terry tagged out, and here now is Bob Richardson, fly to left, singles, and fly to left. The pitch is swung on and popped up to short. Fregosi moves with it and makes the catch as the wind carried it a little. No runs, one hit, no errors, no one left on. Ten of seven innings. New York, six runs, seven hits, no errors. Angels, two runs, seven hits, one error. Matter of fact, in this game, there are three boys whose fathers played in the American League. Earl Averill. Don Lee, who departed in favor of the relief pitcher, and Tom Trey. Earl Averill Sr., although actually, uh, when I say senior, I mean the father, I should say, because Earl, this Earl is not really a junior. He has only one of his father's names, not both. Uh, but the uh, senior Averill will be here. On July 28th, the annual Old Timers Day, when uh, the American and National League All Stars of a quarter century ago, 1937, will be honored here, including the four most recent inductees into the Hall of Fame. Before we go into the eighth inning, I hope you go into the kitchen for some frosty Valentine beer. Tastes so gold and mellow good. Mmm. 
Red Sox 5, Kansas City 1, 10 to 5. Detroit 3, Baltimore 2, and a 6. Minnesota 6, Washington nothing at 10 to 5 innings. Cleveland 3, Chicago nothing, 10 to 4 innings. They're playing a doubleheader. In the National League, Pittsburgh and St. Louis 2-2 two, two, at the end of 2. Milwaukee 1, Chicago nothing at the end of 5. And the only two games we have to report on at present. Tomorrow night, the Kansas City Athletics are here. Game time, 8 o'clock. They'll also be here Tuesday afternoon and a doubleheader on Wednesday, July 4th. Plenty of good seats. As we go to the eighth inning of the first game of the doubleheader, Albie Pearson leads off. Top of the order. Ralph Carey's pitch is fouled off to the left of the plate. Strike one. Strike two, New York. Pearson pops to short, ground to the first, fly to left. They appear to be checking his swing. Slow curve in there, strike two. Nothing in two. And the next delivery swung on, grounded foul down the first baseline. A two strike count. One and two. Terry goes to the windup, and Albie Pearson takes strike three call. One away. Billy Moran, single to center, grounded to third, single to center, two for three, batting 301. Six to New York, eighth inning. Terry's pitch swung on line into left field for a base hit. And it's backhanded by Lopez. Moran is held to a single. Hector making a nice play on that ball. Now Leon Wagner coming up. Getting a hand for two reasons. His 22nd home run in the sixth inning and a magnificent effort to try and grab Lopez's homer in the sixth inning. As he jumped and fell into the seats in right field. Jerry Reddy delivers to Wagner. Swings and lets a high fly into left field. Lopez moving in now and around and under it and has it. had to move by the way I was uh, calling it, the way the wind was blowing. He started back and then over and in. Two away. And the batter, Bob Rogers. Single to center, pops to second, flying to right. Switch hitter. Batting left-handed, of course, against Ralph Perry. Moran moving off first. Joe put the tone behind him. Here's the pitch. In there, strike one. Hander set, delivers outside, ball one, one and one, trying another curve.
strikes delivery. Outside. Ball two. Two and one. The two one pitch. Swung on ground ball. Hit by first to Richardson. Throws back to first and safe. And the ball is thrown away, and on to third goes Moran. After uh, Terry, thinking he had beaten the play, threw the ball down to the mound, trying to run it off the field. Moran raced on to third. What happened was the ball got by Sepatone, slowed it up, but Richardson made a magnificent play behind him and threw to Terry. Johnny Stevens said he was safe. Ralph thought it was uh, an out. And thing is, the third out threw the ball down, rolling it toward the mound, right off the field. Moran, uh, who had uh, stopped the second, then raced on the third. And here's Lee Thomas. A left-hand batter grounded to second, first and struck out. 6-2 New York, 8 sunning. Two on and two out. And the pitch is swung on to a high fly ball into right center. Maris is waiting for it and has it. Inside is retired. Rogers is credited with the hit. And Terry is charged with an error for permitting... Moran to go from second to third since you must account for the advancing of a runner in your scoring. And since he had already stopped at second and then continued, you had to account for it and therefore the error. No runs, two hits, one error, and two left on at the end of seven and a half innings, New York six, Los Angeles two. The man for Valentine. You've heard us uh, mention that many times. And we hope you will uh, ask the man for Valentine. Wherever beer is sold, wherever people have a thirst, wherever the best is ready to pour or ready to go, you'll find Valentine beer getting the nod. The Golden Harvest is the reason for Valentine's very special kind of refreshment. Every drop of today's great Valentine beer is fruit from selected grains of choice barley, specially grown and gathered. From costlier premium hops that are fine ripened and mellowed two weeks longer. Try today's wonderful Valentine, America's finest since 1840. In the last of the eighth, Roger Maris leads off. Bob Fox, the right-hander, delivers low and inside. Ball one. Maris flied to right, struck out, flied to center while Don Lee was in there. Fox's pitch is swung on and popped up behind the plate. Rogers moving under it, and he has it. Standing right in the on-deck circle of the visiting team. One away, and the batter now is Yogi Berra. Slide to right, pops to second, and single to right. New York six, Los Angeles two. It's the last of the eight. Maris is hitting 240 before he went out. Berra 208. Fox's pitch is high outside, ball one. And the right-hander pitches to Barra inside for the fastball, count is two and nothing. Jack Reed, who replaced Blanchard in the outfield, in the seventh on deck. Yogi takes high and away. Knuckle ball. Three balls, no strike. Now 
down the pitch. Outside for ball four. Merrill draws the walk, and Jack Reed comes up. Set five for 18, hitting 309. He had a great day last Sunday. He hit the home run the 22nd inning. One out, one on. The pitch swung on, foul off up here. Strike one. New York. It's the last of the eight. Now the pitch swung on top foul. Coming back out of play. Strike two. So out of the upper deck. Back onto the netting. into the stretch. Here's the pitch. Look out. Sail fine inside. Down goes Jack Reed. And uh, Hout started out of the dugout thinking Jack got hit by the pitch on the hand. But Jack said no. In fact, the umpire said no first. I think Hawk went out more worrying about Reed rather than whether he got hit or not. Pitch is swung on. There's a high drive in the left. Averill goes way back, still going back, and he's got it. Averill went way back in the left. There's the kind of ball he hit last Sunday, too. Remember today the wind was blowing out to right, sporting across from left, and held that one up a little. He wouldn't have gotten a homer, but he'd have had an extra base hit because he didn't pull it sharp enough to get a home run. Two away, and here's Joe Pepitone. Pops to second, line to right. Safe on an error, charge to Moran. The pitch swung on, popped high. Fly ball into short left center. April moves over, under it, makes the catch. Sides retired. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on. At the end of eight innings, the Yankees six runs, seven hits, one error, and three left on. The Angels two runs, nine hits, one error, and six men left on base. On the Valentine scoreboard in the American League, Boston five, Kansas City three at the end of five and a half innings. Wilson pitching for Boston, Feister for Kansas City, Fisher in the fifth, Jones in the sixth. Home runs, Miles on with two on, and Pagnironi. Detroit three, Baltimore two at the end of seven and a half innings. Bunning for the Tigers. Hall relieved Roberts in the eighth for the Orioles. Rocky Colavito got his 17th. Minnesota seven, Washington nothing at the end of six and a half. Pasquale for the Twins. Ripplemeyer for Washington. Daniels in the fourth, and Hannon in the sixth. Home runs, Lenny Green, one on, Bob Allen, not Bob Allen, but Bernie Allen, one on, and Bob Allison. First game of doubleheader, Cleveland four, Chicago two, at the end of five innings. Ramos for Cleveland. Buzzard started for Chicago, Stone in the fifth, and Fisher in the sixth. Francona homered with one on. In the National League, Philadelphia nothing, Giants batting in the first inning, Mahaffey against McCormick. Pittsburgh at St. Louis, 2-2 at the end of four innings. McBean against Jackson. Burgess homering in the second with the one on for the Pirates. Milwaukee won. Chicago nothing at the end of five and a half. Henley against Cardwell. Cincinnati at Houston. New York at Los Angeles start later. Kansas City here tomorrow night, Tuesday afternoon, and doubleheader on Wednesday. In the ninth inning for the Angels, Earl Averill leads off. Struck out, grounded to short, single to center. Felix Torres on deck. 
And the pinch hitter for Bott. 6-2 New York. Ralph Perry into the windup and the pitch is a fastball over. Strike one. Averill hitting 245 on the season. Good power. Jerry's next pitch. Curve. It's hit high and foul down the left field line. Out of play up onto the roof. Two strikes. Yogi talking to Averill. Meanwhile, Ralph Perry getting the sign goes into the windup, and his pitch is a curve. It's fouled off behind the plate. Count remains nothing to. Curve that broke low and away. Errol talking to Salerno, probably asking whether that would have been a strike or not. He laid off it. He had to protect the plate. Nothing in two. And the pitch. Fastball fouled off upstairs to the right of the plate. Count remains nothing in two. Pitches a curve, swung on, and foul back out of play. Up on the netting. A let up curveball. Averill uh, right in there, staying with him. Now the wind up and the pitch. Another curve has lined in the left field for a base hit. Taking on a hop by Lopez. Earl Averill singles to left. Felix Torres coming up. Struck out, grounded to the second, flying to right. With uh, Fregosi. Uh, we're going to have a runner, Gordon Winhorn, uh, going in to run for Averill. Pitch is swung on and missed. Strike one. Windhorn running for April. One on, nobody out in the ninth inning. Jerry's pitch on the way is a little low. One one count. Again, the stretch, the pitch, curveball fouled off to the left of the plate. Strike two, one and two. Two count on the right-hand batter. Wynn Horn leading away from first. And the pitch. Swung on and fouled to the left of the plate. Into the, the uh, Angels' dugout. One ball, two strikes. No 
Nobody out. Gordon Winhorn running for Earl Averill, leading away from first. The pitch on the way. Swung on. Hit down the line for a base hit. Kicks off the barrier to Lopez, who throws to third, holding uh, Winhorn at second. And out of the dugout now comes Ralph House as the Angels. And picked up two straight hits. There's nobody out in the ninth inning. Pitcher coming in. Eleven hits off Ralph Perry in eight innings. Nobody out in the ninth. He didn't walk anybody. And he struck out four. Gave up a two-run homer in the sixth inning to Wagner. Wagner 22nd. Luis Arroyo is coming in. talking to uh, Rocky Bridges and we'll have a runner for Torrey. Coming out of the bullpen. the hand as he leaves. second, two pinch runners for Abril and Torres who singles, and Arroyo is in to relieve Perry. Jim Fragosi is the scheduled batter. Steve Bilko uh, is coming out of the dugout. And we'll see whether he'll bat for Fregosi or Bach. Bilko goes up, puts his hand on the shoulder of Fregosi and says something to him. Fregosi's going to hit. Bilko on deck. Fregosi bats right-handed. Two on, nobody out in the ninth inning. New York leading 6-2. to two. Windhorn leads off second. Bose field off first. Luis Arroyo. End of the stretch. And the pitch. Outside, ball one. Making his second relief appearance since his return to active duty on uh, June uh, 25th. Fregosi takes the strike, curveball, and counts one and one. Runner 
Mariners lead away from first and second. Now the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike two, one and two on the let-up curve. Lead away from first and second. The pitch to Fregosi is inside. 2 2 the count. Moves the curve in closer. Runners lead away from first and second, and the 2 2 pitch. Swung on, bounce toward Boyer. Boyer over to Richardson for one. That's all. They got one man. Fourth out at second. Boyer to Richardson. Getting Bosefield as Winhorn went to third. Fregosi to first. And Bilko batting for Bot. Pearson on deck. to Bilko is inside ball one one ball no strike Arroyo ready delivers the big right hand batter takes outside ball two two and nothing two balls no strike Windhorn on third and Fregosi on first with one out in the ninth inning. 6-2 New York. Arroyo's pitch in there. Strike one. Two and one. Luis all set and the pitch. It's in there. Strike two. Two-two. Two balls, two strikes, two on. One out the ninth. 6-2, New York. Windhorn on third. Fregosi on first. Arroyo into the stretch. And the pitch. Swung on, hit deep to right field, and the ball is going foul. Went all the way, but it's about five feet foul. He was looking for the screwball and hit it breaking away from him and rode it all the way. But foul by a few feet. Windhorn leads off third. Jim Fregosi off first. Steve Bilko batting for Bott. Arroyo in relief of Terry to the stretch. Here's the pitch. Swung on. There's a high fly ball in the left. Lopez moving with the wind carrying it, and he makes the catch. Windhorn tags up, comes on in to score as Fregosi retreats to first. It's six to three. On Bilko's sacrifice fly to left field. And the batter now is Albie Pearson. Flops to short, grounded to first, fly to left, took a third strike. And Billy Moran on deck. Arroyo's pitch on the way, outside, ball one. ball, no strike. The next pitch is in there. Strike one, one and one. The 
one one delivery. Swung on and fouled off. Strike two. One and two. Six to three, New York, ninth inning. A one two count on Albie. Albie Pearson. Jim Fregosi on first. Here's the pitch. Swung on, looped out into short right center, moving in fast as Maris makes the catch, and the ball, the game is over. One run, two hits, no errors, and one left on. And the Yankees win the first game, six to three. The total, New York, six runs, seven hits, and one error. Los Angeles, three runs, 11 hits, and one error. The big blow of the game, of course, is the home run by Hector Lopez with two on off starting pitcher John Lee, who is the losing pitcher. And Ralph Carey, with a neat assist from Louis Arroyo, gets credit for the victory. So that takes care of the first game of the doubleheader. Before uh, we send it back to the studios... The Yankees have asked me to direct this announcement to all Yankee fans, but especially those who live out of greater New York and who don't get too many opportunities to get to the big town during the summer. You know what they say about New York in the summer. It's a summer festival. All kinds of wonderful events taking place here every week. Not the least of which is Yankee baseball and the game's most famed ballpark, Yankee Stadium, the home of champions. The Yankees play the Kansas City Athletics Monday night at 8, Tuesday afternoon at 2, and in a big holiday doubleheader on Wednesday, July 4th at 1.30. And with so many New Yorkers away for the holiday, you'll find plenty of room in New York and plenty of room here at Yankee Stadium. The Yankees battling back into the pennant race will have to be at their best against the surprising A's. Hank Bauer, the great ex-Yankee, leads his surprising A's into Yankee Stadium Monday night for this important four-game series. The A's may not be leading the American League standing, but they've been front runners in the hitting department, leading the league most of the season. Colorful newcomers like Manny Jimenez, feature Jose Tardabull, catcher Joe Askew, and pitchers Ed Rocco, Dave Wickersham, and Dan Fister, plus such veterans as Norm Seaburn and Jerry Lumpy. The A's are overall an improved club, and if you're just thinking of how to spend the holiday weekend, those of you along our Home of Champions Network who might be seeking a little change, why not a trip into New York for the fourth, and as we mentioned, with uh, a lot of New Yorkers seeking their entertainment elsewhere, the city is wide open as far as accommodations are concerned, and you'd have a fine weekend of, or a fine holiday of some baseball and some summer festivalism in New York. So I hope we can see a lot of our fans along the Home of Champions Network here this week or any time when the Yankees are home. Well, that wraps up the first game brought to you by P. Valentine and Sons and by the Atlantic Refining Company and your neighborhood Atlantic dealers. At about 5 o'clock, we'll be back with the second game. And until that time, we'll return you now to our individual Home of Champions stations. This is the Home of Champions Network.